fear of the Lord takes over the service. And I want God to have his way, but I feel like the Lord is wanting to challenge all of us tonight. Thank you, brother. With a question before we go into 24. I feel like God is wanting to question uh, all of us tonight. And I want to make it so personal that you individually have to answer this question. I'm going to be preaching tonight on this this word tonight. These. T-H-E-S-E. These. Amen. That's what I'm going to be preaching on tonight. John chapter 21. John chapter 21. To save time, I'm not going to read the first 14 verses. But in verse number 15. In verse number 15. The Bible said in John 21. In verse number 15. I'm not going to preach just a few minutes. It won't take long for the Lord to deliver what's on my heart. The Bible said, so when they had dined, Jesus saith unto Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto them, unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas. I mean, you know, it's almost like a, you know, it's almost like a, a mother calls her son a nickname, but when he really, she really gets serious with him. She calls him by his real professional name. Jesus said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto me, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the, the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. <laughs> I'm glad he knows all things. He knows everyone in here that loves him tonight. <laughs> He said, Lord, lovest thou me? He said, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I've loved thee. <laughs> Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. That's all that we'll read. Amen. As I told you, I'm not going to preach just a few minutes. But this was a, 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 a pretty tough time going on in the disciples' life. Yeah. Uh, Pentecost had not yet came, and that power that had been given to them, amen, the Bible said right in the verses prior to that, that Jesus breathed upon them, amen, and they received the Holy Ghost, and uh, but yet that power in the way of Pentecost had not really came yet, yeah. and they were still doubt, and they were still unbelief. Now, it shouldn't have been there, but it shouldn't be here for you and I. Amen. He really shouldn't. Yeah. But you'd think somebody with a natural eye, somebody that had seen what Peter had seen and uh, had witnessed what Peter had witnessed and, and all the disciples of what uh, they had done came to. And then after that, after Jesus was crucified, the Bible said the door being shut. Amen. And Jesus just appeared unto them uh, in a glorified state. Uh, it was Peter uh, that was there. Amen. That came in a little later after John and the Bible said that he witnessed it. He saw it himself of the tomb. Amen. Was empty. Christ was not there. It seemed like that if anybody ought to have an easy time uh, to have uh, uh, to be able to believe uh, that Jesus Christ was the son of God amen that he was the of the one that God had sent to redeem his people uh, it seemingly it ought to have been Peter but children of God can men you throw a stone at Peter uh, brother we've all had to always fight the doubt and the unbelief and everything that we do amen after everything that God has done for me uh, brother I ought never to doubt God ever again in my life uh, but brother I will and you will 
as well as anything. It's easy to condemn the, of the Hebrews after they come out of the land of Egypt. The Bible said they murmured, they complained, and have they did this and they did that. But brother, we ain't no different than them. Amen. We're just in a different generation. Brother, we're still doing the same thing. And the Bible said that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now unbelief, oh, brother, it'll bar the, amen, the doors of heaven on you. Amen. And brother, you've got to believe God. The Bible said, amen, that the elders obtained a good report because they believed and they staggered not in the promises of God. Amen. You today as a child of God, amen, you must believe that he is and a rewarder unto them that diligently seek him. But the Bible said now, amen, Peter, brother, it's not that fishing's wrong. Amen, no, sir. Amen, we know that, amen, it can be a pleasurable thing. Amen, for you to take your children or do something like that. It wasn't that fishing was wrong. Amen, but fishing is where Christ, brother, had found Peter to begin with. And the Bible said when he first, amen, come on the scene, Jesus just entered right into his boat. And the Bible said that he had that fished all night long. Amen, but when Christ was on the board, Jesus said, I dropped your nets again. Amen, but I'm gonna tell you something. When you got him on the boat, brother, amen, there'll never be a dry net. There'll never be a dry time. Amen, he's always watching out for the care of his children. Was it not David of old that said, I was young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed of begging bread. What are you saying? The same thing that Paul did. Amen, that my God shall supply all of your need. Amen, but Peter, that brother said, nevertheless, if thy word, I'll drop the net again. And the Bible said, amen, there was a great multitude. Amen, but the next didn't break. And Peter said, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. But Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, amen, fear not. Henceforth thou I shall catch men. Brother, you know what he did? Amen, he bent, he threw them nets away. He walked away from that boat and he never returned until this day. And the Bible said that after the resurrection, amen, that Peter said, brother, I, I go fishing. Amen. What was that? He was discouraged. Amen. He was troubled. And now if you just seen your Lord, a brother go through what he went through. Amen. In Pilate's hall. Of the whipping on the back. And the eyes pulled out of his head. And the tongue lashed out of his mouth. If you had seen that, you might have been a little intimidated too. And to think if they did that to him, they'll do it to me. That's why they all ran. That's why they all was troubled. But Peter said, I go a fishing. Are y'all with me? I ain't gonna preach long tonight. I'm, I'm troubled. I'm discouraged. I'm not backslid. Amen, I'm just down. And I'm gonna go back to that. Amen, that God found me and the Lord ain't around nowhere. Amen, I don't know where he's been. He told us to go to Jerusalem. We ain't made it there yet. And the Bible said that some of the other disciples, I'll be careful about them down spirits. Amen, the Bible said evil communication. That brother corrupted good manners. And you get around people that talk down all the time. That's what will become of you. But I like to be around people that believe God. People that can stare trouble in the eye and say I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. People that believe that there's power and she sung tonight in the name of Jesus. I saw some of the other disciples begin to go and the Bible said they got out there and I wonder what they was talking about on the boat. I wonder what they was discussing. Amen. Here we've left everything we've had. 
amen, hear that? How Jerusalem is in an uproar. How brother, we're afraid that he, amen, will catch us. How the Jews will catch us and maybe do unto us. Amen, what you can imagine what was talked about. How brother, that night on the boat. How be careful, child of God. How the Lord hears everything you say out of your mouth and even in your mind. How was it not Mark chapter number two? How the Bible said that they said, amen, when he has said to the man, have thy sins be forgiven forgiven thee. Have the Bible said in Jesus knowing their thoughts. He can hear what you say in your tent. He can hear what you say in your mind. Amen. You may not come out loud and say I don't believe but God knows it down in your heart. And the Bible said amen that they spoke all night long. I don't believe it was good things. I believe it was a negative things. I believe they was all down and out. Amen. You're going to get down and out. Amen. Sure you are. At 20 24. Uh, let's don't be play no games. Uh, there's going to be more people die. Uh, more people got cancer. Uh, amen. There's going to be more troubles and trials. Uh, maybe more marriages split. Uh, amen. But brother, let me say tonight, uh, let the preacher preach this morning. Uh, be faithful unto the end. Uh, and God will give you a crown of life uh, that don't fade the way. Amen. The Bible said, Amen. That they throwed their nets in. And just like always, they started fishing and they fished all night long. Amen. I mean, surely if you go fishing with a fisherman, he ought to know how to catch a fish. But, brother, I almost believe God was shutting the mouse. Amen. And moving the schools around. As the boat went to one place, I believe God moved the school fish to another. Amen. You can't find it out there, Peter. Amen. What you need to find. And some of you, you're fishing on the wrong side. Amen. You're fishing in the wrong boat. And you're fishing, amen. Brother, out of the wrong side. But the Bible said when it drew daybreak, I believe that Jesus was there up the whole time. Just like the time he sent them out and went into the mountain to pray. He knew what was going on on the ship. He knows what's going on with you right now. Amen. You pray for me. I'll get to where I'm going. Very quickly. Amen. The Bible said. Amen. The day grew near. Amen. The suns are coming up over that ocean. Or rather that sea wherever they was. And they had toiled all night long. And they hadn't caught a thing. You ever prayed all night long and not caught a thing? Have you ever sought God with the church and said, man, I can't get nothing out of that meeting. I can't get nothing out of that preaching. I can't get nothing out of that singing. Amen. You ain't no different than Peter. We've all been there. Amen. But brother, you can't quit. Amen. You can't give up. And you just got to look for the voice on the shore. And the Bible said when the day began to break, there was a voice that come out of that standing on the sea or on the beach. And the Bible said that he said, children, have you any meat? Hallelujah. And don't you know that God is interested in your in your welfare tonight? Amen. He's interested. If you ain't, if you ain't eat, you'll get weak. If you ain't eat, amen, you'll get down. And God's interested before you go into 24. Uh, brother, have you any meat? Have you died? And the Bible said that Peter, amen, said, Lord, uh, we've told all night long. Amen, but we've not caught a thing. Uh, but Jesus, just like again, I uh, said, children, I cast you net on the other side. And the Bible said they did. Amen, the other side of the boat, it ain't very far. Uh, but it was just because the word of Christ and the Bible said they cast it again and when they did a brother they knew amen there was something about that voice and they looked over on the shore and old Peter said it's the Lord hallelujah and when they said it's the Lord I believe they got them old paddles and oars out and started saying let me get over to him and Peter said wait a minute I can't wait for the boat he jumped out of the boat amen and swam to where the Lord was. He loved the Lord. He loved Jesus. He proved it in the garden. He cut Malchus's ear off. He meant he would have died for him that night. Jesus said, Peter, 
put your sword up. It was Peter that was revealed by the Father that he was the Son of God. It was Peter, amen, that knew he knew in a few days was going to go down to Cornelius' house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, Bible readers. He was just in a few days. But Peter, before you go down there and preach, we got to get some things figured out. Hey, man, we got to get some things figured out where you stand. Hey, man, just in a few minutes, in a few hours, 24 is going to come. And before 24 comes, hey, man, we've got to get some things figured out. We've got to get some things out in the open. The Bible said that when they got on the shore, the very thing that they was fishing for, Christ had done had it on the shore. Ain't that amazing? The very thing that you feel like that you can't live without, Christ has already got it. Seek ye first. Uh, Y'all know what the scripture said? Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of these other things. If you'll put God first, amen, and seek God with all of your heart, the very thing that you kill yourself for, God will have it already on the shore. And the Bible said of them famous words that we wrote songs about. Amen. Now listen to the Lamb of God. He's opening his mouth and listen to what he says. Come and dine. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lamb of God said, come and dine. And here they all are. They're eating fish. They've been up all night. They told and they ain't caught thing. And Brother Brandon, I can almost see in a secretive way. <laughs> I can almost see Brother Dave in a secretive way. Said, Peter, come over here a minute. I need to talk to you alone. But this is nothing new. For was it not God that drew Jacob alone? And said, Jacob, what's thy name? The same instance is going on now in Peter's life. They was ten there. Amen. But the eleventh had to be drawn aside. It wasn't John. It wasn't Bartholomew. It wasn't Matthew. But it was Peter. And he said, Peter, come over here a minute. I need to ask you something. I need to talk to you about something. I got a few questions I need to ask you. And Jesus looked to Peter. Them fish, maybe even in his mouth. Maybe a chomping on him. And he looked at Peter. And he said, Peter, love us thou me more than these. Come on. My text tonight is these. For Peter, it was a fish. It was an occupation. It was a, it was a something that if he had turned back to and did, he would have backslid. But before we go into 24, I want you to know that Jesus is pulling you aside. He's asking you a question tonight. Real quietly. He's not asking it where Paul can hear. He's not asking it where Caleb can hear. It's to you. Amen. The very thing that you battled with, the very thing that you fought with, the very thing that you've tagged along in your life. He's talking to you. Hear him tonight. And what's he saying? He's saying, Missy, Sharon, Lorraine, Tommy, Hope, Nikki, Hannah, Brandon, can you hear the voice on the shore? What's he saying? Lovest thou me more than these? Yeah, more than these. <laughs> can you hear him? Oh, yeah. Amen. Be careful before you answer. <laughs> Be careful because you don't want to play a hypocrite. You don't want to be like the psalmist that said they flattered him with their words, but he knew that they would turn. You don't want to be like the psalmist that, hey amen, make your vows tonight and hey amen, but there's some things tonight. 
that you've been showing in 23 that you have proved over and over and over again that you love more than you do Jesus. <laughs> There's some things in your life that, hey man, that you're struggling with and you're battling with and you're having more faith and you're having more dependency on that than you are him. Come on. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I want to get right down in our hearts where we're living at. And the question at hand, lovest thou me more than these? Peter looked at him fish. Maybe he had a flashback of all those times out there on that boat and leaving that boat and healing all them saints that was sick, yeah. casting out all of them devils on that Mount of Transfiguration, yeah. all the things that he'd seen. On, he looked to the Lamb of God and said, Lord, thou knowest, thou knowest. I love you. I love you. That ought to have been enough. No. No, no, no. No, it's not enough. I need to ask you again, Peter. We need to get this out in the open. We need to get this fixed before we go into 24. Oh, I'm glad tonight I'm in the in the secret place of your hearts. You don't have to tell your husband. He don't, you don't have to tell your wife. You don't have to tell your family, your children. The Lord knows. But there's some secrets there. And God told me through the Holy Ghost to ask you tonight before you walk out the doors Lovest thou me more than these? The second time he asked Peter the question, Peter looked at him and said, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord. You know I love you. It ought to have been enough. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. I've got to ask you one more time. Peter, Simon Barjona, I'm calling you out by name. I've singled you out of the crowd. I'm not talking to Bar Matthew. Bartholomew, I'm not talking to Matthew. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to you. Simon, thou son of Jonas. I can't go through here and call all of your names tonight, but the Holy Ghost can. Amen. <laughs> He can call your name right now. Some of you, it might be that what I preached on Wednesday night. May that be a cell phone. Some of you, it may be money. Some of you, it may be a lot of things. I'm not trying to figure out what it is in your life. And you don't try to waste the time to figure it out what it is in my life. I'm just asking you, before you go into 24, lovest thou me, Christ? more than these. The third time came, Peter was troubled. He said, Lord, Lord, oh, you know I love you. You know I love you. You know what Jesus said? Feed my sheep. You can't feed my sheep if you don't love me. Preachers, Brandon, Matthew, if you don't love Jesus more than the things that I'm preaching about, you can't feed us. You can't help us. But if you love me, feed my little lambs. You got to be a little more gentler with the lamb than you do a sheep. Come on, Sister Sarah. I don't know where you stand, what's in your life. I thought.